education, working my way up the chain of command from the countryside to the city. Anwar was the 41st perpetrator I filmed at the end of this two-year process. The first day I met him was the day where he took me up to the roof and danced the cha-cha-cha, which you see at the beginning of the film. In some ways, that was a very typical first encounter with a perpetrator, this sort of desire to boast, uh, this openness, this uh, going into really horrific detail. And at the same time, there was something unique there in that Anwar I, I, you know, had a kind of pain which is close to the surface from the very beginning. He says he's a good dancer because he was drinking, taking drugs, going out dancing to forget what he's done. So unlike so many of the perpetrators who simply would boast of what they did, I saw in Anwar that maybe the boasting, which is essentially a denial of the moral meaning of what they've done. It's not a denial of the facts, but to boast about it is to deny the moral meaning of those facts. Maybe the boasting is actually a desperate attempt to convince themselves and insist to the rest of the society that what they've done was heroic because they've never been forced to admit that it was wrong, because they remain in power. And to explore that, I then lingered on Anwar. We spent five years filming together. We filmed 1,200 hours of material um, producing The Act of Killing after five years of shooting and then, and then three years of editing. There's this version you've seen tonight. There's a longer director's cut, which has just come out on DVD and Blu-ray. And um, you're welcome to see that, too, if you're interested in this. But it, it somehow... Long before I met Anwar, all of these men were boastful. All of these men, as I said, were taking me to the places where they killed and showing me how they killed. I generally um, rather quickly started to propose to them, look, you've participated in one of the biggest killings in human history. Your whole society is based on it. Your lives are shaped by it. I want to know what it means to you and to your society. You want to show me what you've done. So go ahead and show me what you've done in whatever way you wish and I will film the process, I will film your reenactments, I will com combine those things together, both your the scenes you want to make about what you've done, but also you and your fellow Death Squad veterans discussing uh, what you want to show, what you don't want to show, what you want to, and your reasons for leaving things out, and your reasons for putting things in. I'll combine this material to show what this means to you, what this means to your society, how you want to be seen and how you see yourself. Now, how difficult was it to get a local crew? Because we see in the, in the end credits, nearly everyone is anonymous, I imagine, because they were in fear for their lives. Were you, did you feel in fear for your life during the, the shoot? You know, I, I think the, the only times where we really felt concerned, afraid while we were shooting was when they start to question the process. Like when Adi says, look, if we succeed in making this film, it'll turn the history around 180 degrees and reveal that we were the bad guys. And afterwards, after we filmed that scene, I heard him say through his radio microphone, hey, to, to the others, hey, don't you think Josh is a communist? And that was a moment of real alarm where I went up to him immediately and said, look, if you have a question for me, here I am. You can ask me directly. 